What's going on YouTube? Welcome to another live oil painting session. Today we are going to continue this palette knife painting that we started last time. And uh, it, it is the first palette, completely 100% palette knife painting uh, portrait, that is 100% uh, portrait palette knife painting that I've ever attempted. And uh, like before, I will say this is definitely the most difficult project uh, imaginable uh, because it just is palette knife is not easy uh, but today we will talk about how to paint portraits with palette knife and uh, remember these live streams are Mondays and Wednesdays 6 45 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time so I've got my palette knife here and um, we've got a question hey Tipu we had a question earlier from Jonas uh, he asked um, Sorry that you couldn't make the stream. Uh, sorry it's too late for you. Uh, your question is, when painting the ears, should you think of it as a hard edge unlike the chin uh, that has soft edges? Uh, so typically, like if we're talking about an ear, uh, ear lobe, because um, there's different parts of the ear, uh, but I think you might be talk referring to like the, the lobe or just the edge of it. So we can just look at the Rembrandt um, and the Rembrandt, it's, it has a softer edge, I believe, uh, than the chin. So the fact that it has, he did paint a softer edge relative to the chin would directly answer your question from Rembrandt's perspective. He chose to make the ear softer than the chin. However, different circumstances um, would, would play a role. So for example, if you um, if you take a look at this edge here, it is sharp, but it is sharp because it's missing some components, um, which we're gonna get into today. Um, and I've finally learned some techniques that I would like to share with you, um, some stuff that I figured out uh, during class with my students uh, this, this morning and that's going to be how to apply small transitions with palette knife and make it seem as though it was with a paintbrush so first thing I would suggest is um, have some pre-mixture so my palette already had these mixtures on it but it's going to have some more and uh, these mixtures are going to be handy um, when it comes to applying smaller shapes for example i'm going to use the front end of the palette knife for these uh, smaller shapes and they're going to require more precision than using a paintbrush that's what's going to make this a little bit more difficult um, so more precision is going to be needed so for example here i'm putting an edge uh, or plane that's going to create a softer edge and you you want to use less paint than you think uh, which is the complete opposite from painting with a brush so for example I put in less paint and now you see I'm starting to get a transition hey Libertas I'm starting to get a transition right there a small plane change on the corner of the ear um, never mind the the whole unfinished look of the painting right now that the fact that you can uh, that we can do that create that kind of plane is going to uh, give us more confidence in that we're going to be able to uh, add all the detail that we want all the all the shapes that we want onto the onto the painting it's just going to take a little bit more time like I said, uh, this is a live painting session, so feel free to ask any questions. The more art-related questions you have, the better. Um, or if you just want to hang out and just uh, spend time with us, just feel free to just tell me where you're from. Uh, do you like to paint? Do you like to draw? Uh, what is your favorite medium to use? That kind of stuff. Here, I'm going to use the tip of this again. His earlobe actually does have to drop a tad bit. So 
only a little bit lower than the nose, so it has to come to about right here. The painting is mostly dry, but still somewhat in between dry in some areas, which shouldn't be a problem at all with the cobras. It doesn't have that, they don't have that um, kind of uh, almost like super glue kind of gooey texture when they start to dry like some other paints do. Okay, so I've lowered the nose a little bit. Now I want to get right into business here uh, with the eyes, for example. We are going to now do something really, really different compared to what you've seen me do in the past in very similar ways. Uh, first, I need to know what is dry and what is not dry. So you can hear the palette knife scraping on here. It's waiting for something to come off slightly. And here. So here I found something that's um, somewhat still a little bit wet. Mind you, this was Monday and today is Wednesday. These paints dry incredibly fast for um, only being two days, uh, it is remarkably fast drying. Um, and again, these are, these paints are listed in the description box of the video. These are Cobra Talons. Um, how is my palette attached to the easel? Good question. Uh, this is a kind of weird setup. Um, if you ever want to replicate this setup your, yourself, it's not that difficult to do. Um, so what I have is a canvas behind a panel. This is a this is a canvas, um, and it's just behind this panel that I'm painting on. And I sandwich the palette in between the panel and the canvas. And of course, this is a gray. That's why I chose it so that the gray would show underneath of the of the plexiglass of the palette. And then the final piece is just a clamp. The clamp has a magnet on it, but the magnet's not really doing anything. Um, I wasn't paying attention. I just got some paint on the edge there. Uh, that's all right. It's oil, it's oil paint. It's not gonna, it's not gonna do anything. So that's the only thing you gotta watch out for is um, accidentally getting some paint on there, but not a big deal. As you see here, I've got plenty of room to uh, sandwich the palette behind. And this is not anything novel by any means. This is just just a random way that I figured that I can keep my palette uh, set up. And there you see I put the clamp and that's it. That's how I, uh, how I set it up. Well, thanks for the question, Fran. All right, so now with the eye, this is gonna be really fun. Uh, to do and I'm gonna go to one plane at a time and I'm going to start by curving around the eye socket so uh, I have some values here that are lighter some that are darker so what I'm gonna need now is actually a lighter value so I'm gonna put that off to the side and we're gonna mix a lighter value and I'm looking at part of the eye socket the corner of the eyelid uh, that is kind of like a grayish orangey. So we're going to mix up a grayish orangey color. Oh, yeah, that's one problem with this setup. And it has nothing to do with the, um, with the palette. It has everything to do with the easel. Um, when I apply pressure to this, it's an old easel. I mean, it's like probably pushing 20 years old. I don't know how old this thing is. Um, it's, it leans down a little bit, which is why I use an extra clamp sometimes uh, on the corner. I don't know where that other is, my trusty clamp. Clamps are actually one of the most useful um, things to have in an, in an art studio. I'm just going to clamp it underneath of this because it, it's trying to fall. It actually did fall on, 
fall earlier today. So I don't want that to happen again. All right, now that we have this color, let's test it out. Palette knife painting will improve your color mixing dramatically because you have to mix everything. And uh, you're mixing on the palette and you're mixing on the painting as you're gonna see here. Okay, see that? Now oh, I'm mixing on the painting. And I'm using less paint than necessary. That is the most important trick I can tell you with palette knife painting uh, for portraits. Because portraits all about subtlety. And subtlety is not something that comes natural with palette knife. But you can um, use the front of the palette knife if there is a rounded part to it like this. And put only a small amount of paint like that only a small amount of paint deposit it where you want it to go and use a kind of like a padding form like that and distribute it across the surface and you can mix on the on the canvas by depositing small amounts of paint and this is going to create the plane change for the curvature of the eye socket. Palette knife painting for portrait is going to be all about control of your mixtures, control of your texture and you're going to you're going to naturally create a thicker painting than you would otherwise. It is incredibly, incredibly difficult compared to um, painting with a brush. So consider it not really a way to, um, to paint unless you want to do it that way, but consider it a way to learn how to work with color how to work with plane. Colors and planes are going to be your, the thing you're going to get the most, the stuff you're going to get the most out of um, this, this uh, approach. Yeah, and if anything is overly textured, paintings are not fragile things. You can, for example, um, let's say, I don't know, there's too much texture right here. I can cut it out, almost like I'm scraping it off. I can scrape it almost. Uh, hey Beanpot, you asked, do you think it's easier to block in shapes with knife or brush? Well, really it depends on what you do. I mean, if you only paint with palette knife, it's going to be easier for you to paint with palette knife. But, but most of us don't. So uh, it's easier to block in with a brush than with a palette knife for sure. And I got to make sure I can kind of visualize the drawing here. Because now that I'm starting to hint at where his pupil is going to go. It's going to demand more accuracy from me. But palette knife, I will admit, I'm not anywhere near as um, experienced uh, when it comes to portraiture as I am with a brush. But maybe ask me that question and like, a month of only painting portraits with a palette knife and I'll have a different answer or I'll have the same answer but 
I'd say uh, this is a great exercise for your planes and color work. So as you see here, I had to I had to make this color. So either use a mall stick or your hands, like I just did there. I'm getting a shape for the tear duct. So everything is going to be a plane now. Everything, every aspect of it will be this plane relative to that plane. Just like in, when we started it, it's just smaller shapes now. How to work with those smaller shapes. Not easy but I'm gonna show you ways to, to do it. It is possible. Um, and I may even spend the whole time just here for this one, just so we can see how far we can push that. Again, use the front. Load it up pretty well, use the front and apply less paint than you think. Less paint than you think. As a general rule, you want to use more paint as much as possible. Um, but with palette knife, it guarantees you're going to have a ton of paint. So you, you don't really need to think about using a lot of paint anymore. You just need to think about how to put enough paint on the tip end of the knife like that. And those are going to be your precision shapes. It's important to know how much paint is on the knife. So right now I know that there's quite a bit of paint that I don't want to wipe off yet on the paper towel. Once I got as much of it off and put it back onto the palette like that, um, I just wipe it with the paper towel and then recharge it again using the tip of the knife. It's especially important that you sit back or stand back as much as possible. because the knife is so difficult to control. 
you're gonna wanna have to do the least amount of work to get the most out. There, welcome, welcome. Thanks for saying hello. Yeah, let's try to paint as much beautiful art as we can. Alright, let me zoom you in so you can see the texture now. And I finally got this to work, I think. Yeah, I did. Or did I? There it is. It's that one. Finally got it to work. Well, I'm glad to have you here. All there. Now you see how I'm applying a very precise mark with the end of the palette knife. Not easy, but you really learn how to mix and how to deal with planes. With the brush, it's so easy to push shapes into one another and create the illusion of planes really fast. I mean, with a brush, I would have reached this point in probably like 30 minutes, but with the knife, it's taking twice as long. For example, the sclera, I can't just add a little bit of skin tone into a gray, I have to mix the gray. And then add something to it. I could add the skin tone to it, but I don't want to use up that mixture.
Uh, so Alder, I'm painting on a cotton canvas panel, but with the palette knife painting, it's going to look like a panel. Uh, it's going to make it really smooth. So the palette knife will actually render whatever surface you're painting on um, kind of useless. I mean, as long as it's a, a gessoed, a, a prepared surface, the palette knife texture will uh, overpower pretty much whatever texture is on the canvas. Unless you have like a really rough textured canvas, but, but, but anyway, it's just a cotton panel. I like panels um, because if I do sell this in the future, uh, it'll be easier to uh, to send it. Um, it takes up less space, and uh, it's a little more sturdy than painting on the a sheet of cotton like I did before. Here's an example where I'm mixing on the canvas. A lot of effort to create these curves under the eye. It is possible, as you see there, it is possible. It just takes more time because you have to mix absolutely everything. Nothing blends with the knife. It doesn't allow you to do that. And even when you do blend on the on the painting with the knife, what you're doing is you're mixing. Remember, use the least amount of paint necessary. The least. The knife is going to do all the work when it comes to texture.
again, here is an example of where I'm mixing on the canvas. It's not blending, so I have to add a light, an extreme light, so that I can mix into it. Let's see. Um, with the palette knife, it seems to create softer edges uh, when applying minimal paint. Yes, it does. Um, but also, the edges are created through sometimes this kind of a swooping palette knife mark. Like that. Um, so that's extremely difficult to predict, but sometimes this, there it is. Just the right kind of swoop of the brush will create the brush. The knife will create that softer edge. But you have to make sure that you have the right value. That's the biggest thing. When it's all said and done, um, the best thing would be for someone to not believe that it was done with a palette knife. That's the goal. I mean, portraiture is pretty much all about illusionism. I mean, classical painting is all about illusionism. It's also, um, palette knife painting is a, a cross between sculpture and painting. Oh, you are kind of sculpting to a certain degree. But again, this is portrait painting on insane mode. Very difficult. Um, there's nothing more difficult than this. Absolutely nothing. Um, it just, there really isn't. Um, and with all the knowledge that I have of painting, it is still not a very easy thing for me to do. But there's a lot of reward that you gain from this. It improves your ability to handle more challenging situations.
be careful with the sclera. That is not straight white. Be careful because it's easy to think that the white of the eye needs to be white. Now I can easily prove to you that it's not white simply by doing this. See that? Put white on the palette knife. See how many different uh, values down it is? Let's see, he wrote, uh, also the upper leg casts a shadow on the upper eye. Yep, yep, it does, um, which is what I was trying to paint over there, the value, uh, the little shadow. Let's see, he wrote, my first painting I did uh, used white for the eye. It looked like the eyes were popping out. Yeah, you, putting white for the sclera is almost like uh, putting headlights on uh, someone's eyes because it's the lightest thing um, it's like it's basically like a flashlight um, but it's a perfectly natural uh, tendency for us to do that because we think white of the eye well of course white isn't it white um, but yeah it's okay that that that's a normal tendency
has his eyes a little more open in the reference. Okay, so we've done a lot for that eye, and then we can start to move on to the other one. Uh, first thing, though, drawing. That hat needs to come down, like, to here. Um, so, like I said, I can mix on the canvas, and that would be a faster way to uh, cover it. This is what I should have done last time. Whenever you're covering a big area with the knife, just mix on the canvas. It's much easier to, to move around that way. This is what I mean by it will teach you how to mix because I have to get that value. Uh, from Fran, do you clean the acrylic palette with turpentine? No, I don't really clean it at all. I put it in the freezer. Sometimes I'll clean it by just scraping it with the knife. That's all. No, there's no real need to clean it um, unless you're trying to have a perfectly clean um, mixing space, which I, I don't want a perfectly clean mixing space these days. Uh, I'm just used to there always being something on the palette. Yeah, so I don't I don't use any any solvent, any turpentine. I don't use any gamsol. Uh, just water, since this is a um, water mixable oil paint. But for this entire painting, I didn't use any water any anything to thin out the paint and you can see it hasn't sunken in at all there's really no need uh, especially with palette knife you don't need any medium just the medium of the paint now i'm gonna have to mix up a little more more paint angela have a good night. I mean, I hope you're having a good night. All right, let's mix up some uh, some dark. Join me in the darkness. We shall mix a dark. As a rule of thumb, I typically like to start more pink and orange and then eventually gray it out, green it out. Um, so it will get closer to the original color. I'm aware that it looks more pink.
Yep, yep, the original is cooler. Uh, the yellow on the palette is just, um, it is permanent yellow deep um, from Cobra. Permanent yellow deep. It is a semi-transparent yellow. So as a rule of thumb, I like to work, uh, I, I like to lean towards the orange, orangey reds uh, whenever I'm starting a painting, a, a portrait painting. It's just easier for me to build the cooler colors onto the warmer colors. That's just, uh, I don't know, it's a preference, a personal preference. It doesn't have to be that way. Especially with a palette knife, I mean, there's no glazing that's going to happen with a palette knife, so anything goes. Angela, you wrote, looks, uh, you said it looks interesting. I think I'll use a palette knife to paint some. Yeah, definitely go for it. It's hard. It's definitely hard, but it's, it teaches you a lot about mixing. Hey, Fernando, what's shaking? Oh, I don't know. Uh, could be, maybe I'm bumping into the camera, uh, but the easel might be shaking once in a while.
Fernando. <laughs> Try painting with a fork. Well, it might be possible, but I mean, this is flexible. I can probably apply paint with a fork. I don't know if I can mix with it. Well, that would be a challenge. Oh, it's how you say what's up. Oh, okay. Cool, cool. Well, thanks for saying what's up. We are definitely painting plain by plain here. Some things could be possible with a fork, but <laughs> mixing, I don't know. Does anyone remember the viral video of someone painting with cheeseburgers? I thought it was one of the worst wastes of cheeseburgers, but pretty cool concept. I mean, I'm up for whatever challenges. Um, like I said, this this for me, I I did it as a challenge, just to show you that it's possible. And at least this section here, it's like no different than working with a brush at at some point. All right, let's add more green. Yeah, so for example, this I wouldn't be able to do with a fork. Mixing. So let's address the nose a little bit now. It's already been an hour, it's crazy. I didn't even feel the hour go by. Such concentration is needed with this. Definitely helps that some of it is dry. At least uh, most of it is dry. Hey, Fernando. Oh, don't worry, I, I know. We're not teasing about using a fork, but that would be some <laughs> some bad street cred. Uh, also, painting with a palette knife. I don't know how it feels like you should have patience for that. I don't know. Uh, you'll get the patience. I mean, patience is built. Um, I didn't start out painting with the level of patience that I have for it today. Certainly not. It it, it took years to develop more patience and understanding 
And uh, the thing that that really helps is that you have to understand that as long as you are on the right path, mistakes are only part of the learning process. What I mean by right path is you, you're not like, I'm actually gonna have to mix another color, so let's switch camera angles. Um, and yeah, of course, like the drawing, I'm gonna have to get all this and push it up, mainly from, maybe from up here, up. But anyway, uh, what I mean is, it, it's the first couple paintings that you do, say like the first 10 paintings, um, there's this excitement and there's a lot of learning that happens uh, in, the, in the beginning stages. Um, and it's really fun, but if you're painting from photo references of like celebrities or like family pictures, like if, uh, if it's the holidays and everyone's like, oh, you can paint us a picture of Uncle Billy uh, with his 1967 Camaro or something like that. Um, paint from the old masters and you will learn. Uh, and and have someone guide you. It doesn't have to be me. You can find other other teachers out there um, that can can guide you along the way. Just make sure to have a have a mentor and paint from the old masters, and you will learn. Because they set it up for you. The whole thing is set up for you, and all you gotta do really is study it, and and uh, you will learn. It's not like it was back in the old days where you had to go to the atelier and pay thousands of dollars. Now we have YouTube. For example, uh, pretty much everything I learned about dog training, I learned on, on YouTube. And now I have a dog that I think can um, be in competition in the future. Hey, Michael, I'm glad you were able to join today. It's great to have you all here. And again, feel free to ask any questions. I mean, this is not your typical painting approach. So um, I, I don't mind any questions. So here I'm gonna new, uh, move the plane of the nose up to correct the drawing. Yeah, because it's not your typical subject matter. It's, I mean, it is your typical subject matter, but it's not your typical approach to painting. It, it's, it's definitely more, I think, more analytical in nature. With a brush, it's kind of just throw down the paint and it's going to look like a thing. But with this, it's like, how do you throw down the paint? And now I'm showing you, use the tip of the palette knife. The brown handled ones are typically the better ones. They're more flexible. I have a link to a one that looks like this one in the description box in case you need a palette knife. Don't try to paint with a Liquitex. I have nothing against Liquitex, but that is not the palette knife for this kind of painting because it doesn't bend. You need it to bend a little bit. Hey Chuck, uh, reference appears beige, yellow. Um, well, it's part lighting, but it's also part intentional. I, I made it more pink on purpose uh, in the beginning, and then I'm going to throw more green on it. Hey Michael, let's see. Oh, <laughs> thanks. I'm glad you liked that I took the challenge. Definitely a different technique for sure. Um, there's nothing like this. Not only am I painting with palette knife, but I'm only using three colors. Of course, I pre-mixed my orange and my brown and my green. But I only have 
the primaries. And there was one point in time where I didn't even know I could do that. So use less paint than you think you need. It is the opposite when you compare it to um, painting a brush with a, with a brush. When you're painting with a brush, you use as much paint as you can handle. With the knife, you want less paint because it just naturally has a lot of, it carries a lot of paint naturally. I'm adding a kind of greenish color. That's going to move all this facial hair up. Again, I'm going to be mixing on here. So with the brush, I can draw the lines to correct where the, I need to move the mouth, but I can't do that with the knife. I just have to visualize it, place it down, and hope for the best. Think about it in terms of shapes. By shapes, I mean visualize the block, the blocks, basically, just this big block moving. Don't worry about the way it looks uh, in, in the unfinished stages. It can be troubling. Remember the, um, the term uh, awkward stage? That is going to occur when the painting starts to look human and things are unfinished. For example, moving the mouth up is, is unnatural. And since I'm not going to be adding any details to that, let's, let's zoom you out as I start to correct the mouth.
one way to build your patience is simply just watching this whole video. This one's a little bit longer than they usually are. They usually just do about an hour, but I'm, I'm into this painting a little bit more. Now that I've figured out a new concept, it's a lot more fun. And be patient with it. Leave yourself room to make the mouth look busted like that. Put the shapes down. And don't worry about the way it looks. Focus on general vicinities, not like, oh, it looks like he's sticking his tongue out. Oh, this looks too green or uh, too pink or whatever. Don't worry about that. It won't bother you as much in a still life. It won't bother you in a landscape, but with portrait, it will. It's natural. So understand that it's a natural process to, to have a weird feeling when the painting is in between stages, but also understand that that's just the way it is. I'm going to mix on the canvas again. Just like I said, I can move it all up.
Yeah, I'll do it. Yep, it does cover much, much faster when you mix on the panel. That's what I would have wished that I, I knew when I started this painting on Monday. Just mix on the thing. Turn the painting into your palette. Let's see, Alder wrote efficiency of means, like Sargent would say, yep, 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 yep. Especially when you're a career artist, um, you want to do the least and get the most out of it simply because time is money. Um, so if you can get a lot done and not a lot of time, you have more time to, what did Sargent do? I think he played like tennis or something. Uh, for me, it's 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 pool. I like to practice my nine ball, uh, so and train my dog. So efficiency of means definitely means time is money when you're a career artist. I'm not gonna make you sit here and wait for ten hours for me to get to this point with palette knife. I'm gonna achieve it in like an hour and a half or however long it's it's been. Uh, efficiency of means, I like it. means we don't have all day we gotta get things done in a timely manner
I can get to the the chin and all that stuff. Again, even for those small shapes, I'm mixing on the canvas. Now let's tackle some of that green stuff. How are we gonna do it? By mixing on the canvas. Like I said, palette knife really teaches you how to mix paint. And again, thinking in terms of planes, don't worry about the way it looks. No one's watching you. Always remember, it's just you and the painting. That's one of the things I didn't like too much as a student. Um, so you're all, you're always kind of anxious about the teacher coming around and like looking at your painting and like, well, you know, that shouldn't be that green. Well, obviously it shouldn't be that green. I'm mixing on it to create the color that I want. Um, well, I mean, you wouldn't want to say that to a teacher like that, but um, it is kind of a little bit stressful when you're in a class and you're in the middle of changing something and the teacher is like you need to change that thing um, but it is part of the learning process there's no denying it
Let's see. He wrote, uh, do you think some master painters would paint the first layer based on a common mid value and then add darks for highlights later? Uh, so I'll tell you my thoughts about what a, um, a say, um, someone that has the skill level of like Sergeant Nelson Shanks or like one of those big names in art history. Um, there's basically two schools of thought that come to mind. One is a very systematic approach where A implies B does not mean B implies A unless A and if and only if implies B, things like that. Like um, that would be more like Bouguereau. Uh, I'd say Norman Rockwell is probably kind of like that. Um, and then you'll find other painters that are more if they kind of feel it out. Um, and that's like Sargent, Nelson Shanks, Rembrandt. I'm sure Rembrandt didn't have like a system that he used all the time, especially in his later years. Um, in general though, it is easier to work without color in the beginning and then gradually build up the color. Uh, but in more modern times, you'll see painters, they uh, go with full color in the beginning. That's a more kind of modern way to look at it. Um, so, uh, which method would succeed the most? So you wrote, uh, paint. let's say you wrote, some master painters would paint a first l layer based on a common middle value and then add darks and lights later. I think the safest way is to just focus on two values light and shadow in the beginning light and shadow two tones is what you'll see the majority of the most experienced painters uh rely on is light and shadow that's the the answer to your question light and shadow absolutely light and shadow um but once you get into the realm of a la prima painting and uh painting with a palette knife, um, things will get kind of different because I, I can't just go and draw light and shadow with the palette knife. It'll take me a, a millennium. So I have to go in with um, big shapes of color, which is more difficult, um, but it's more efficient. But for you, I would, I would suggest, uh, for anyone really, I would suggest stick with light and shadow long as possible. Work from the old masters. Yeah, Alder, you will find great success with only focusing on light and shadow in the beginning. Just focus on light and shadow. That's how I teach my students, light and shadow. I've got some pretty good students. They've definitely got a lot better over the years. Um, one student, um, Kathy, she's been with us forever. Um, she's amazing and she has her own following now she's going to be selling her own paintings i bet you she could start her own youtube channel now and have a pretty good following uh so over time light and shadow is the best way kathy's been very consistent with light and shadow light and shadow and it it really has made her a really strong painter along with angela here um, she's learned so much over the years, it's amazing. A light and shadow is the tried and true way to begin. Yep, yeah, sure, no, no problem. I really appreciate any, any kind of questions that helps with the live stream.
Yeah, yeah, Kathy. Uh, yeah, our Kathy. She has her own following now. Yeah, and Ellen has learned a lot too. Uh, her Bugaro studies are incredible. Yeah, all of you have progressed so much. Of course, no need to thank me if you put in all the work. All I did was just make some videos. But you put in the work, you put in the time. Okay, so let's see what else can go green. I think that's as green as should make it for now. Now there's all kinds of little subtle things in here that I didn't do I didn't do yet. pushing that light a little bit more on purpose. To create more contrast and I can dull it down later. I can also use that opportunity to strengthen that shape, make it a little more precise. Mixing on the canvas. You're witnessing me learning something. This is not something I would have been able to do last week. So remember, it takes time. Oh, thanks, Ellen. I'm glad you like seeing uh, the mixing on the canvas. It it's definitely something that takes some getting used to. It's not it's not natural. We don't do that with brush with brushes as much. Um, so it takes some some getting used to for sure. And like I said, everyone, you're you're watching me learn something because I don't. I didn't come into this challenge knowing how to do this, uh, but I'm figuring things out along the way that makes it easier to um, add soft edges and to paint eyes, for example. Like I, I didn't know how to paint an eye with palette knife two days ago. So um, there's a lot of learning that happens here. That's why it takes me longer. I could have achieved this stage and less than half of the time half the time 
with brush. Let's see, you, so all there, you love to add the colors. That's your favorite part. Oh, good, good. Color is very, um, it's a very, uh, almost like ethereal uh, process of feeling. We all see color a little differently anyway. And that's certainly true for our monitors, the computer screen. So it's a very, um, you know, like otherworldly kind of ethereal feeling. Hat should probably be lowered too, but I think I'll leave it like that for now. Next, next, the light on the neck. This is why I say it's nice to have a layer that's dry underneath so I can kind of spin the knife and mix on here. Hey, out of out of nothing. Nice username. What's the name of the original reference? 
I'm gonna double, double check. It's from Google Arts and Culture. Um, let's see if I can zoom out. I can just post the link on the chat. Let me just zoom out of it. It's called Man with a, F a Feathered Barret. Uh, but I'll just send it to you on the messenger. Or not the messenger, the chat. So that's the reference there. Yep, that's the link to the original reference. More green. Also, in, in hindsight, uh, whenever I do another palette knife portrait, I'm going to have a darker tone because it, I found that it was really difficult to work over the white. Uh, not the white, sorry, the tone that I chose was too light. Um, the reason being that there's more of the tone of the canvas that I think I can use with palette knife, just because I can um, dig into it basically, um, because it does shovel the paint around. So it will be easier in the future for me to uh, have a darker tone. So lots of new stuff here. Lots of new discoveries. Hey Shubo, oh thank you. Thanks for the hearts. And the armor of course has a but look what's going to happen if we put straight white into this. It's going to look like headlights. So I've got to avoid that. So I'm going to mix on here. Now, of course, I don't want it to be that blue. So add some skin color or whatever. Hey, out of nothing. Um, yeah, my family is from Peru. I was born and raised in Maryland. So I don't really know much about Peru other than the Peruvian chicken is really good. Sorry to any uh, vegetarians or, or vegans out there. Um, yeah, I have nothing. I don't know Peru. The last time I went, I was 15, so I didn't really, 
experience much other than the food. And I was just in the city, Lima. Oh, nice. You've had a blast visiting Peru? Yeah, I don't know really much about it. I mean, I, I know Lima, Machu Picchu. I think uh, there's a city called M Mira, Miraflores. Miraflores. Um, it's about all I know. I was amazed that the rain there is different. It's more like a mist, mist kind of rain.
Thanks for the thumbs up. You're cute. Yep, the face starts out more pink. But you can start it out purple if you want to. It all depends on your preference. Thanks, Alan. It's uh, it's been a learning experience for sure. Yeah, this is what we were talking about on Zoom. How to, how on earth are we gonna get the uh, subtlety, the small stuff? It's all, all really in the tip of the knife. Trying to sit back a little more. Okay. Yeah, it's about to be two hours, so I guess we can leave it there. So next time we will continue to layer more structure onto the face and naturally start to add more green to it more grays i just like the pink i prefer the pink in the beginning it's, it's easier to to build it that way for me like i said you can start off purple if you want to and then just add like yellow the complement onto it and build it that way So that's a glimpse of what we'll be doing next time. But this is a hundred percent palette knife painting. Very difficult to do, but as you see here, I'm learning little things here and there to make this a uh, possibility. And there you have it. That is this. The, what is that? The second layer? Yeah, second layer for this one. Second layer of palette knife painting. Um, did about two hours of streaming this time because I, I guess I was more focused than usual. So this is the point where I will ask if there are any last minute questions. Uh, thanks, Angela. Nice to have you here. Okay, so as always, I'm gonna go and get Mr. Hugo.
always, we can't end the YouTube video without Mr. Hugo. Hugo the Shiba Inu. Who, uh, we just recently uploaded his newest YouTube video. There's Hugo sitting there being all fancy. Saying, why did you wake me up? So you could come and say hi. Want some food? And I did wipe my hands before picking them up. Want some food? Good boy. Check this out. Sit. Bang. Bang. Good boy. So that is Hugo, the Shiba Inu. Shiba Inu trick dog. Sit. Shy. Good boy. You wanna play pool? You go. You wanna play pool? Good boy. Oh, he has got tons of tricks. Can you say hi? Can you speak? Say. Speak. 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 He doesn't want to speak. Say. His dogs don't naturally bark. Speak. Speak. Good boy, almost. Sit. Speak. 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 There you go. They don't naturally speak. Uh, you want to see the newest one? This one is not very well developed. Um, these are chest compressions. So he's learning how to do CPR. So you want the treat? You go. You want the treat? channel he has an Instagram he even has a TikTok and I don't have a TikTok so he's got everything and soon he's gonna have a Patreon so we are in the middle of all that stuff so it looks like there are no last-minute questions Hopefully you don't mind the Shiba Inu at the end of the video. Alright, so, once again, thank you all so much for watching. Remember, the schedule is Monday and Wednesday, 6.45 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Next time we return will be on Monday and we will continue developing this palette knife painting. Once again, if you're interested in taking your art education with me further, my online classes start at just $5 a month, gets you into still life painting on Mondays, and $10 a month is portrait painting on Wednesdays. And there are numerous other benefits available to you as well. So. Uh, if you're interested, the links are in the description box of the video. Once again, thank you all so much, and I'll see you on the next one.